Hello everyone, here I am making some outside workout. Yes I know, you never saw one of my videos start that way, but this one is an exception. On my way to come here, to this beautiful forest, I saw something that caught my attention. I saw this. Let me explain a little bit. Here in Switzerland, we're going to have a votation, what we call an initiative, about a very interesting and important topic. Here in Switzerland, unlike in the majority of the countries of the world, the people who make money with dividends or rental income from real estate or money from businesses pay less in taxes. Capitalists and entrepreneurs pay less in taxes than the workers, people who live and earn money with a salary. And some politicians here said that it is completely unfair and they made this initiative and they cry that we have to tax the rich. And I wanted to share my thoughts a little bit with you, because that initiative bothers me a lot. It's not the initiative or the idea of raising taxes that bothers me here in that case. Actually, there's something about self-development that bothers me in that initiative. What really bothers me is the motivation behind this initiative, the rhetoric, the story that the politicians are telling. I think that it is a very dangerous and very disempowering story from a self-development perspective that those politicians are telling. And I wanted to share my thoughts with you today. Back to the studio. Before we talk about the five self-development issues of that initiative, there is a quote that I wrote that I want to share with you. The quote says, mediocre people blame others for their life circumstances. They blame their families, their friends, society, the government, or the rich, in the case of that specific initiative. They never take ownership of their lives and expect other people to rescue them. Very often, the government. Superior people, on the other hand, take extreme ownership of their lives and blame themselves when they fail or can't achieve their goals. Superior people take responsibility because they know they have what it takes to succeed sooner or later. The harsh reality, whether you like it or not, is that you have to participate in your own rescue. Nobody is coming to rescue you. The sooner you know that, the better. That being said, do not forget to subscribe and activate the notification bell to never miss a new video. Number one, accept reality. Because when you don't accept reality as it is, you will suffer. You can be sure about that. And the politicians behind that initiative and the people that back them up do not accept reality. They do not accept the economic reality of the world. And the economic reality of this planet is that the people who invest in real estate, who build successful businesses, or who invest in stocks, will always pay less in taxes, no matter what happens. It has always been like that in almost all the countries in the world. And there are good reasons for that. The rich, or the capitalists, if you prefer to call them that way, always pay less in taxes for several reasons. But the main reason why they pay less in taxes is that they do precisely what the government wants done. The people who invest in real estate are providing affordable housing for the population. That's exactly what the government wants done. The government rewards those people by giving them tax breaks. The people who build successful businesses are providing jobs. That's exactly what the government wants done. The government rewards those entrepreneurs by giving them tax breaks. The people who invest in stocks are providing capital for new companies to be created and for existing companies to expand and thus hire more people. That's exactly what the government wants done. As a result, the government rewards those people by giving them tax breaks. Do you see a pattern here? Do you start to see why the capitalists, the people who make money without working, pay less taxes? They do so because they're doing exactly what the government wants done. Understanding reality helps a lot to actually accept reality. There are two behaviors that you can adopt when you're facing a reality that you do not like. The first behavior that you can adopt is to reject and ignore this reality and cry about it, like those politicians behind this initiative. Here is the thing, you can ignore reality if you want to. It is possible, but there is one thing that you can't ignore. It is the consequences of ignoring reality. You can ignore the reality of capitalism. You can ignore the reality of our economic system but you can ignore the consequences of doing so. And the consequence 
is that you do not learn. The politicians and the people behind this initiative are not learning. They are not growing because they are rejecting and ignoring reality. This attitude will bring the unavoidable pain, suffering, anger and resentment. And believe me, the people behind that initiative are very resentful people. And you don't want to have all those negative feelings, don't you? That's why I suggest to you another perspective. I suggest to you to adopt behavior number two when it comes to your reality. And that is embracing that reality. Understand it, whether you like it or not. For instance, when you know that the rich or the capitalist or however you want to call them pay less in taxes. Instead of getting angry like those politicians, why don't you accept reality and ask yourself, why is reality the way it is? How can I understand this reality? How do they do it to pay less taxes than I do? What can I learn about it? Is there something that I can implement? Can I imitate them somehow to improve my own life? Remember, the first step to growth is accepting reality. Number two, life is unfair. The sooner you know that, the better. That is another reality, another very harsh reality you will have to accept, whether you like it or not. Remember, the people who always cry tax the rich are not learning because they don't accept reality and they don't have any financial education. And third, they don't know anything about history because history is full of examples of people who said tax the rich and finally those who ended up being taxed are the middle class. Regarding that initiative, some people are born richer, some people are smarter with their money, some people had an unfair advantage because when they were kids, they were taught the value of money and how to make money as a capitalist. And you yourself, you also have an unfair advantage because you're watching this video and you're subscribed to Oak Wealth Builder. But more seriously, life is unfair. The capitalists, the people who make the most money without working, pay less taxes than the people that make the less money working. But life is unfair in every aspect, not only with money. It is unfair, for example, that you maybe have grandparents. I don't have any grandparents that is alive. It is unfair that I have two kidneys when there are some people out there who need absolutely a kidney transplant, otherwise they will die. It is unfair that some people are more healthy than others. It is unfair that some people are handsome and some people are ugly. It is unfair that some people go to better schools and have a better education. It is unfair that some people are more clever than others. I think you got the point. Unfairness is an unavoidable feature. You will have to deal with unfairness all the time. Those are one of the prices of being alive. But here is the real question. And no, it is not a general question. It is a real question to you. Yes, to you, the person watching this video. Are you going to sit down and cry that the world is unfair, like those politicians? Or are you going to decide to succeed no matter what, despite the unfairness? I am curious to know your answer. You can share it with me. You can pause the video right now and send an email with your answer at daniel at oakwealthbuilder.com. Number three, take extreme ownership because you are not a victim. I write this down. Lame people blame other people for their problems. Just like those politicians, they hear and they tell you, oh my God, you're a poor victim. If you're struggling, it's not your fault because you're a poor little victim. It's because of those filthy rich. It's them. They're responsible for all of your problems. Vote for me and I'm going to rescue you. This kind of talk, typically used by politicians, is a load of bullshit. Because superior people take extreme ownerships of their problems. Just like I said in the quote at the beginning of the video, they reject all this kind of talk, framing them as a victim. Because listen to this, right now, if you're struggling, if you're broke, it's not other people's fault. It's your fault. You're the problem. Your best thinking got you where you are right now. And I'm not saying this to make you feel bad. I'm actually giving you very good news. Because if you are the problem, if it's your fault, it means that you can fix it. Taking extreme ownership is one of the most empowering things you can do in your life because it puts you as the captain of your own boat, not a powerless and passive passenger. When you take extreme ownership, you have the power to improve your life and fix your life. You do not depend anymore on outside people such as politicians and the promises. 
If you're broke at the moment and you take extreme ownership, you say, okay, it's my fault if I am broke right now. I put myself into that situation. But that also means I can get myself out of the situation. I will take action right now because I do not depend on anybody. Of course, to be successful, you will have to work with other people. But at the end of the day, you have your life in your own hands. You do not depend on the goodwill or the charity of anybody else to succeed or to be well off in life. Again, if it's your fault, it's very good news. It means that you can do something about it. That's why you're much better off rejecting all the rhetoric from those politicians who want to frame you as a powerless person for political support. Framing people as victims are the tactics used by despots. And boy, we already had enough of them in history. When you don't take extreme ownership, when the bad circumstances in your life are not your fault, it means one thing. It means that you are doomed. What do you prefer, being a doomed victim or being the captain of your own boat? Number four, the abundance mentality. I already mentioned the abundance mentality and all the benefits it can have for you. Check out that video. And the opposite of it, the scarcity mentality, brings a lot of problems, a lot of negative feelings such as envy, anger, and resentment. And I'm going to be a little bit extreme right now, but I can say that most of the wars in history can be linked directly to scarcity mentality. In a perfect world where everybody has an abundance mentality, this kind of initiative whose main motivator is envy would never exist. It would not resonate with anybody, but unfortunately, we are living on planet Earth. Yes, here I am accepting reality because I have to practice what I preach, right? And this kind of initiative, fueled by jealousy and envy, are very popular. When you adopt the abundance mentality, you let go very easily of jealousy, envy, and this kind of rhetoric. When you adopt the abundance mentality, you realize that there's enough for everybody. There is a massive amount of wealth, much more than you can realize. And everybody can have a share of it if they put the effort. And here I'm talking about all kinds of wealth, business wealth, financial wealth, wisdom wealth, spiritual wealth, love wealth, everything there is enough for everybody. If somebody is rich, it does not mean that you're poorer as a consequence. Most of the time, it is exactly the opposite. Because that guy is rich, you're probably richer also. Take Bill Gates, for example. He's very rich, but he didn't make anybody poor. Quite the opposite. He made all of us richer with that technology that we have today. But the scarcity mentality is one of the key assumptions of this initiative and a very ingrained beliefs in the minds of the politicians behind this. They are convinced that when somebody is successful, they are making everybody else poorer. So remember, there is enough of everything, of wealth, resources, jobs, love, etc. There is enough for you, there is enough for me, there is enough for everybody. You just have to learn how to acquire all of that. Number five, learn from those who are better than you. Don't envy them. When you envy somebody who is more successful than you, deep down, you are scared. You have the fear that you will never be able to be as successful as they are, that you're never gonna make it. First, you have to convince yourself that you're able to get what you want. The four bullet points I gave you before should help you to do that. And then when you're convinced and you see somebody who is more successful than you, instead of saying, ah, oh, I'm sure he's a crook, he's an asshole, I'm sure he's a very bad person. Instead of saying that kind of things, you will say, hey, what can I learn about him? I want to talk to him. I want to learn from him how he did it. That way, whenever you meet other people who are more successful than you in some area in their lives, you improve. You learn from them. The people behind this initiative don't want to learn from the people who are more successful. Quite the opposite. They let envy, jealousy, and other negative feelings run their lives. As a consequence, they want to punish those who are more successful. They want to take away what they have for themselves without working for it, without earning it. And they hide behind the mask of social justice to accomplish their disempowering and evil goals. The bottom line of this initiative and all the other political events around us. Some politicians around the world, no, actually most politicians try to use your feelings against you. They try to use their feelings to advance their political agenda, to advance their political power. They will try to use the scarcity and the victim mentality on you. Don't let them. You don't need any politician to fix your life. 
The only thing you need is hard work and perseverance. Ask yourself every morning how you can make your life a little bit better before going back to bed in the evening. Learn from other people who are more successful than you. Learn from this channel. Learn from books, online courses, etc. That includes your personal life, your financial life, your professional life, every aspect of your life. And don't get me wrong, I am not saying that inequality is not a problem. It is a big problem. It is very dangerous when the gap between the have everything and the have nots is too big. But to close this video, I will say a sentence from Dr. Jordan Peterson. You can't fix the world, but you can fix yourself. By fixing yourself, you make the world a bit better. That's it for this video. I hope that you liked this video and learned something from it. If that is the case, a little thumbs up is always appreciated. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel to never miss a new video. And I will see you very soon.